Hello everyone, welcome to Cyber War. My name is Victor. Today we're doing uh, another work walkthrough, another write up for uh, Room on Try Hack Me. As you know, we are working towards finishing this learning path, SOC level 1, and making a video for each and every one of these uh, rooms. We finished the fishing part. The cyber defense frameworks, cyber threat intelligence. Now we're left with a bunch of others. Today we're going to start on the EFIR, which is Digital Forensics and Incident Response uh, module. I'm going to do a few of each and not go through all of them like I did with the phishing. So today we're doing DFIR, an introduction. I'm not sure how to say this in English. DFIR, DFIR, whatever. Right. First task is DB. So basically, this is like the the place where Two separate fields meet. Uh, it's incident response, but with um, with a need to keep the evidence, like to keep a chain of custody, and to, so it's basically two different jobs uh, into one. And um, it's one of the most fascinating parts of uh, the defender role. And except from doing the work, one of the things that I like is to read the, the reports, like the DFIR report, this website, for example. Just pick one. Um, and you get a bunch of information. Methods, DTPs and everything. Um, and I, I for one find it fascinating. Maybe a certain kind of geek to be interested in this, but you learn a lot. All right, so what is the FIR? It is Digital Forensics and Incident Response. Ten points. One is Digital Forensics and the other is Incident Response. Wow. Amazing. Basic concepts. So, um, we have artifacts, they are like the evidence, we have evidence preservation, a chain of custody, this could be useful if you get to court, order of volatility, like how volatile data data is like you know, memory RAM will be complicated. Okay, timeline creation. So we need to make a timeline of events. Okay, let's play. Right.
OK. All right. So that was too easy. Like in real life, you never do this in 30 seconds, but I guess educational purposes more than important. All right. I don't think more than perfect is possible. You got my point. And some of the tools. You have Eric Zimmerman's tools. Pretty cool. Then you have the crawl artifact parcel and extractor built by Eric. And they have a room for it. This looks very interesting. Okay. Autopsy, you must have heard of it. Unless your company has a lot of money and you're paying for the expensive stuff. It's um the tool, an open source uh, tool to track data for forensic purposes volatility this one is for memory red line is the fire eye uh, instant response tool velociraptor Is an endpoint monitoring tool, and we have a room for it. Okay. All right. So the incident response process, which is basically the point, and you have an um, incident handling guide NIST, which is the National Institute of Standards and Technology. With the Department of Commerce. No idea. They are pretty famous. So we have four steps according to NIST preparation, detection analysis, containment, eradication, and recovery, and post incident activity. Separately from that, there is an incident handler's handbook by SANS. You know, the guys with the, the good training that you hope your company will pay for. Where is it? You see, it's only eight thousand dollars. So these guys that over at Sans, they also have an incident handler's handbook. 2011, updated 2021, and Institute, and they have more steps. They have preparation, identification, which I guess matches detection and analysis, containment, eradication, recovery, which is step three from here, and lessons learned, which here they call it post-incident activity, and I, I wouldn't agree that it's only lessons learned. After recovery, do more.
what stage now we have the question at what stage of the incident response process are disruptor services brought back, brought back online that's recovery um now depending on the business depending on what happened exactly you might have recovery sooner you in some critical businesses or in some critical parts of some areas and necessarily businesses institutions or whatever you just move to a different like you have everything backed up and you just move there to figure out what happened in the meantime the very niche case all right at what stage of the incident response process is the threat evicted from the network after performing the uh forensic analysis well they call it allegations here oh. What is the NIST equivalent of the step called lessons learned in the SANS process? Is this one post incident activity? Boom. All right. This was a very nice room. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next videos and uh, remember to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel, Cyber War. Follow, not follow. Visit our website, cyberworld.ro. Also, want to point out video that I how passwords get hacked in the real world. Will your password get hacked this year? And here I'm just pointing out main actual methods would get hacked you're like an average citizen some bank major targets for an system very cool video blog thank you very much for watching i will continue with this series with the Final outcome to have the entire learning path covered in those. Thank you so much.